because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Why are you looking at me like that? What is that shirt? New York Chance. Okay. Do you like that? Yeah, we, which is your American football team? New York Chance. Is it? Yeah. Actually, I'm big in the American Big, Big Giants fan. I do a weekly radio show on ESPN for the Giants. Actually, Edward. Really? Yeah. I thought you were just a blagger. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You've had a busy week in New York. You've been at... Ariel Helwani, you've been at Barstool, you've done the Crystal Heart Show. It's been a busy week for you, right? Yeah, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Um, no, it's been great. There's been a huge amount of media around Edgar and looking forward to tomorrow night. I think we're going to get a great fight. Good to spend some time with Andy Lee and the team just at the weigh-in earlier today. They're up for it. You know, a little bit of news on Canelo for Edgar Belanga might just sort of cloud his sort of mind of what he's trying to do and they fancy their chances and I think it's going to be a, a tough fight for Edgar Belanga. I think it's going to be a great card. Let's touch on that Canelo news first. Is that a bit of a middle finger up to you, Eddie? Because he's, you've brought him home, you've done the big homecoming show, and then he's went and signed a three-fight deal with BBC? Not at all. I spoke to him last night. I mean, we, we haven't got anything for Canelo. We, we haven't made him an offer. And I knew that he was going to be making a move on the Charlo fight. I don't know the details of the multi-fight deal. A um, little bit surprised, but I think it's a good move for him, in all honesty. Like, you know, he's at that stage now where, you know, probably the closing phase of his career. Um, I don't have, you know, we've done, I think, his last seven out of eight fights because we've had the opponents and the fights that he needs. We couldn't make the Bivol fight, and therefore, I don't have a fight for him. Um, so he's going to make his move, and I think it's a good move for him, in all honesty. Like, if he can fight Charlo, and he can fight Benavidez, and, you know, I, I understand the move. For us now, we have to look now at the big pot that's now available to make big fights and not just one night that would be with Canelo Alvarez but making a string of big fights for the platform and now that's what I'll be tasked with so those conversations that have been bubbling in the background that certain fights we might not have been able to get over the line for budget reasons now we can so um, yeah no no middle finger listen we've had a great run from it it's been fantastic for our business it's been fantastic for DAZN sometimes the numbers work, sometimes they don't. And I think the zone are saying, you know, we understand and we don't have anything for him at the moment. And uh, when he comes back or when he's available again, Edgar will be ready and, you know, someone else might be ready who comes through, Diego Pacheco, in 12, 18 months' time. Who knows? But, you know, I think uh, I think it was the right move for him at the time. It's not wrong of me to say that 2022 was Matchroom's year. 2023, we can safely say PBC and Showtime have really taken that. Do you welcome the competition? Of course, and they're doing great. Like, you know, the, the, there's a, the, the industry's weird, isn't it? Like, the first thing that came out about this Canelo news was let's target Eddie Hearn. Like, Oscar comes straight out with an I said, mental. It's like, why are you bothered about me? You know, it's like your question there. Yeah, they're having a, yeah, they're having a great year. I'm, I'm a fan. I, you, you asked me about Spence Crawford. I tell you, it's a brilliant fight. You asked me about Javante against Ryan Garcia. Brilliant fight. So all it does for me is give me a kick up the backside. You know that one, like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a competitor. So if we're not, if they're doing better than us this year, the only thing on my mind is how do we win? How do we get even? How do we make a big fight? You know, and that's, you know, the likes of Bam against Sonny, great fight, but what do we do now with that budget to make a slate on the back six months to get all square? And, and that's, that's good news for fight fans. Because you know what I'm like. I'm not going to lay down and say, I'm happy to be number two. Nah. Or number three. Nah. Like you said, 2022 was our year. And 2023 right now, PBC are on top. That's got to change. So when I woke up this morning, there's a spring in the step to say, okay, to zone. You know what you spend on every Canelo Alvarez fight? Now let's make some big ones. And that's what I'm tasked with. You, you mentioned De La Hoya's tweet. Did you see Ellerby, Debella all no, having a bit of a, a no, pop? No, no, I haven't seen Ellerby. Or, what did they say? They, they were basically Just saying, saying yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Look, I think it's quite flattering, really. Um, I think when you, when you want someone's demise so badly that you don't know, 
or there, there has to be a reason for that. So what is the reason? And the reason normally is that you're envious of that person. The fact is, Lou DiBella is absolutely sick as a dog that he doesn't have my deals around the world and he doesn't have my shows and he doesn't have my business because he feels that he should be having them. Well, guess what? Tough shit. You ain't got them. Leonard Ellerby, sick as a dog, don't do any shows anymore. So he's looking at me going, why is he getting all these dates? What? He wants to be me. Oscar de la Hoya clearly wants to be Eduardinho Her. So I just like, you know, just tickling the, the nuts and just pulling their plonker. But it is weird at the same time. Do you know what I mean? But I guess everyone just keeps telling me, how flattering is it that all these promoters just keep talking about you? So it's, it is a bit tiring. But then I look in the mirror and go, jeez. Dillian White made some comments on TalkSport. I'm sure you've seen them. He yeah. said, we've had one three-line email about the fight. No conversations at all. Eddie Hearns just disappeared. You're doing a million interviews about fighting me when you're not actually negotiating. Any comment on that? I mean, I don't know how many lines the email was. It was to say, would we would like you to offer you the fight with Anthony Joshua on August the 12th for a purse of X. They came back and said, absolutely not. This is, I think the term they used was unacceptably low and nowhere near the number that we would want for this fight. So I just went, okay. Spoke to AJ and they went, all right, we'll, we'll move on to someone else then. That was really how it went. Um, since then, of course, we heard the interview this morning saying, that's now acceptable, that offer. So I sent them an email and said, do you take the deal? And they said, yes. So I said, great, we'll send you a contract this afternoon. So, so AJ waits on? Well, no, I mean, if, if, the, if the offer is acceptable, the fight's on. And they've said the offer's acceptable. So now we the con, by the way, and now people say, oh yeah, let's see what's in the contract. There ain't gonna be nothing in the contract. It's very simple. This is the purse, this is the date. It's in London. Don't worry about flights, don't worry about, look. So we'll see if that is the case. And if that is the case, that's the fight we want. That's the fight we've always wanted. But the reason that I never went back to them is because they made it very clear that that offer was nowhere near the number they wanted. And really it was kind of like our max number. So we didn't really bother. Now they come back, say the offer's acceptable. Fantastic, let's try and get it done. Last one for me, because we're pushed for time. Uh, Belu, Rosansky, yeah, is yeah. it gonna happen? Do you know what, like, Tony's a competitor, Tony's a fighter, and he mentioned it to me about a month ago. He's like, you know, that Rosansky that flattened Babich, I quite fancy fighting him, be two time world champion, two division world champion. I'm like, Tony, leave it out. And then he's like mentioned it again, and then like he tweeted about it yesterday. So, I mean, I think he beats Rosansky. It's still not easy. When you've been out of the game for what he's been out for, three years, for, like, you can't just slip back in and start taking big shots. And But I don't really want to see Tony fight again. But if he does want to fight again and become a two division world champ, who knows? Edward, thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 